Do you write Valentine's cards? Do you receive Valentine's cards, chocolate, flowers? Do you wear your whips or work in progress? <clears throat> Do you add an extra skein when you make a shawl? And do you gauge or do you make swatch when you make a, a shawl? Would you like to know what this is? And that one tank top in the previous episode that I did not even have the time or f totally forgot to talk about. Would you like to know what this is? All <laughs> These are all the questions that... I will be talking about in this episode, so let's start. Welcome and welcome back. Uh, this is episode, I forgot the number, the, it will be on the title. This is Stefano Saxnanda and this YouTube channel is titled Be Extra uh, Knitting Podcast by Stefanos. Be Extra means um, it's a celebration for everyone's creativity, so you know, just be brave, knit what you want, love what you knit, and, you know, not to be arrogant, but just to take back that term, be extra. When somebody said, oh, they're extra, well, it could be a positive thing, meaning that it could be that you are challenging yourself when you're working or making another project in your knitting or whatever it is that uh, craft that you're doing crafting that you're doing maybe you're picking up another skill or a new skill by challenging yourself in you know doing a new project that you've never done before or that yeah just to develop continue developing yourself that's pretty much what this channel is about so welcome back to everyone who has been <laughs> listening to me and also welcome to new new viewers um grab your project sit down relax or throw away your project if you've been working on your project for too long and you need to, you need to stretch around or walk around and you know listen to something and either way focus on your project de-stress relax do whatever after all it is just knitting y'all okay so yeah first question do you write valentine's card anyway um why the question um every fall and spring 
fall, winter and spring semester, uh, I take Italian class. And this semester, um, or yeah, this last, no, actually yesterday, one of the topic in the class. So it is, so backtrack, uh, the Italian class that I'm taking is in Princeton, um, in the Princeton area, uh, Princeton University area in New Jersey. And, um, oh, hello, hair. Um, wow. What was I saying? Yes. The Italian class. Uh, every I've been taking this class for maybe six years now. And right now, um, the name of the class is Advance and Conversation. So basically, you know, it is more to continue, you know, building my conversational Italian skill, I guess, by going there. And one of the topics that we always talk about during February, mid-February, before February 14th, is Valentine or San Valentino. Um, do you know that actually the history of Valentine's or St. Valentine is very tragic? Like just any other, you know... Well, it's not a lo- it could be a love story, but the Italians, well, the Catholic Church, you know, uh, historically, um, Saint Valentine, it back, uh, you know, uh, originated from um, back in uh, to the Roman Emp- Empire. So, in the third century, there is the Empire Claudius. And the empire thought that, you know, unmarried or single young men make better soldier. So he prohibited young men to get married. So there are, and also at that time, the name Valentinus or Valentine or Valentino is really popular. In the Roman Empire, so there are actually multiple. Could there could be multiple Saint Valent or uh, the origin of the Saint Valentine? But one of the you know like most popular story that uh, is really well known is this priest that you know when the uh, marriage was prohibited, he was against it, so he continued. Um, giving the sacrament of marriage to, you know, young couples. And uh, during that empire, so he got, you know, caught by uh, the empire. So he went to jail. And, you know, he, again, this is the tragic, the tragic story. So he actually at the end got killed by, you know, like the empire or whatever. But when he was in jail, he met the daughter of the jailer so there was uh this young girl she was actually blind and you know she i guess they got introduced to each other when you know the priest was in jail and um i guess they fell in love and before the day he got killed he actually sent a letter that says dal tuo valentino from your valentine and he was he was martyred or he was executed i guess on february 14th now he also historically um um was or did i guess a miracle basically it, it, it was believed that the girl, the blind girl, uh, was healed um, by him before he got, you know, executed. And then she was able to see the letter. Anyway, um, we always, you know, go through, <laughs> like the teacher likes to uh, retell the story, retells the story every valentine's like around valentine's anyway another thing that we did uh, during the class is it's a little bit juvenile i mean that's what that's my question you know 
do people like, you know, meaning grown adult or married or whatever, do y'all still write Valentine's card? So in the class, we had a practice. One of the practice um, that we went through is to, because this is a composition, conversation, and grammar class. So one of the composition part is to write in the, during the class a Valentine uh, card. So basically, there is uh, you start with a salutation, and then you address the person that you're you know giving or writing the uh, the card to, and then you uh, make two lines why uh, they are your valentines or yeah, and then and then conclusion. So maybe like six lines. So I want to share with you. <laughs> the valentine's letter that i wrote in the class this is it and that's why it's here so um let me just show you so this is my horrible handwriting so if um i had to write a letter this will be it um and people whoever like that would receive this kind of letter might think that oh what is this and throw it away which is definitely possible and would be acceptable <laughs> so let me just uh, read it in italian and then i will convert it into english ciao buongiorno tu sei l'uomo dei miei sogni. Non posso vivere senza di te. Fai le pizze fantastiche ogni pranzo e preparai i buoni caffè ogni mattina. Ciao tesoro mio pizzaiolo. Prendo due pizze per favore con la birra. <laughs> so I don't know if, if you might have caught what the general idea here but basically i said hi um good day or good morning um you are the man of my dream i cannot live without you you make amazing pizza every lunchtime and you also prepare amazing coffee every breakfast um hi my dear pizza maker or baker whatever it is in the bakery i would like to have two pizza please with beer so basically that is you know a love letter to a baker or a pizza maker because i love pizza and i think that is an acceptable letter to write. <laughs> uh, anywho, that's the first question that we just went over. Um, yeah, so it was fun. Um, it, oh, wow, what am I doing? What we and everyone, you know, um read their letter one by one and you know after we all wrote it and i was hoping somebody would write a love letter to their cat a love letter to their i don't know chanel purse or a love letter to their new mattress all these are acceptable don't you think so don't you think so or don't you think so? Yes. Um, <laughs> second question. Do we wear our whip? Do we wear our work in progress? Do we swatch for shawl? Or 
do we add extra skein when we were when we work on shawl okay so that brings us to what am i wearing what am i working on um and also maybe i don't know finished objects just to remind everyone or if you're new i am a monogamous knitter i only work on one project at a time except for my secret project but this secret project is a live in project that i will never bind off anyway so i don't take that as a you know like a ongoing project that is more like um check mark for myself so anyway i don't have a finished object because i'm working on my whip and yes that's what i'm wearing so i am making sophie shawl from petit knit and it is huge um i chose so sophie shawl in not the sophie scarf is the shawl the big one and i chose the large size and supposedly for the large size you either use um you either use a sock yeah no wait sorry blah, 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 blah. sport weight 200 grams each 100 grams it's about 320 yards okay it's either sport weights 200 grams so basically two skeins two full skeins of a sport weight or three full skeins of dk am i wrong um anyway i also side note i will put everything that i will refer to in this youtube on my instagram that way i don't have i can cut down my editing time uh by just putting all the pictures uh on the instagram which is at b extra knitting that is at b e e x t r a k n i t t i n g b extra knitting no space so at b extra knitting so whenever i say okay uh, this picture or this project or this item just go to my instagram and you'll find um well <laughs> after i post them you'll find them you, you'll see what i'm talking about and if you are watching this you can you know open the in my be extra knitting instagram as you watch and then you can look uh and it's actually better that way because you will have more time to look at the picture while the video is progressing anyway what am i talking about uh yeah so petit knit google petit knit sophie shawl the large one anyway um it is supposed to be 91 inch length definitely this is almost double 91 uh because i added a one extra a uh, skin of sport so i use sport the the a sport yarn that i'm using is ella ray echo tweed um uh, i got it from yarnia uh this is um 328 uh for 100 grams so i have 300 grams so i'm at the last uh scan right now uh but as you can see here it starts from here and it keeps going and it keeps going and the color way here is indigo it keeps going uh have we reached no we haven't we haven't even reached 
the center point keep going and then this is the center point now here now we're decreasing so basically the way it is it, you increase you know increase increase um on one side and then after you hit the half mark of your material in weight you go back you decrease back down so yeah it's a simple one but i think why um i i enjoy oh, i mean why do i want to work on it Be, uh because i find that there is some like a something um how do i say it there is a I, I i don't know how to say it but it looks very um i, I just thought i just like it i just like the basic design but it has yeah a powerful impact like a like a strong impact with the basic design kind of thing it's one of those things so like as you can see here i the reason why i added one extra ball or skein of yarn is to pro proportionize i'm on the larger side or i'm pretty big <laughs> And, you know, if you go to the picture of the pattern for, for this shawl, you will see how, you know, like the shawl is going off the, over the person and then over her shoulder and down, um, you know, um, her side. And then, you know, like it looks nice with that uh, three quarter, uh, you know, coat. So if I only use two... Um, two skein of yarn and only stop at 91 inch length or width uh i'm six foot um uh in height that you know vibe that is you know the target of the shawl will not be uh reached or will not be accomplished but by basically adding 50 percent so it at the end it could be 150 inch I will put all the information on the Instagram again. Follow the in or go to the Instagram. You you don't have to follow because it's a basically for public. You can just have a look. Um, it's at B extra at B extra knitting. Um, I will put all this information when it's done. So hopefully I will finish this tonight. Uh, I am this much. Let me just show you um, how long. So if this is the the middle part i have so right now i'm decreasing up to this width so i have this much left over to go and since this is like a narrower width section it won't be too long and I think this is only 50 grams left so yeah um yeah i guess we do we do wear our whip and is there anything wrong with that no are we being too extra with it yes celebrate your work you know another thing have you all gone to Rhinebeck where people are having needles on their sleeve that is like five eighths complete, seven eighths, a quarter, three quarter complete? Yes, celebrated. Who cares? So the answer is yes. Wear your whip, wear your finished object, but also finish your whip. I mean, really finish your whip also. I've heard some people are doing finish it February or frog it, right? It's not a problem for me because I'm a monogamous. If I don't finish a project, I don't go to the next project anyway. But 
hey, maybe to finish it, you wear it. You enjoy it. You get the incentive. You get the push. You get, oh, look at this. And then you're like, okay, maybe I'll wear it without the needle on the sleeve. Maybe people will not ask me, oh, hey, excuse me, why is there knitting needles around your sleeve and not on the other one? Or why are there two knitting needles, you know, like one on each sleeve? Yeah, maybe, maybe finish it. <laughs> Um. Yes, so we wear our whip. We finish our whip. We celebrate everything. Yeah. Oh, I need more coffee. After this, I need to go to get more coffee. Oh, do you like my bear? Yeah. I like it. Um. Yeah, it's been really warm. Here in the East Coast. By the way, I'm in Jersey, uh, not too far from New York City. On Thursday, it hits all the way up to 50 something, 57 degree Fahrenheit. It's like spring. But I heard that on Tuesday, it will be snowing. So it's just a fake spring. All right, next question. What was that tank top that Stephanus put? on the display in the last episode because he did not even talk about it and one of you would actually ask me hey um did you talk about that tank top i said oh i forgot you know that happens so <laughs> as i promised i will talk about that now so this is again unpublished design it's easy. If you just find Google diamond lace stitch pattern knitting, you will find, you know, you know, it, it's it's a diamond lace stitch knitting that I, you know, repeat over and over that I do in a round. So, so this is basically bottom up. Uh, what you can do is get, you know, your favorite tank top and measure the circumference and figure out if you want to have the same fit base, meaning if do you want it to be negative um, ease? Do you want it to be positive ease? Do you want it to be perfect fit? You know, it's a tank top, you know. Uh, and then from there, once you get the circumference, you go back to your swatch, and I suggest, because this is lace, I suggest you wash that swatch, and then you block it. So basically, it's because it's a lace, and lace will not open up beautifully if you don't block it. You need to block your lace, especially if you're making lace with some material that will behave differently after blocking. For example, this is a silk, like pure silk, uh, that just opens up so beautifully after I block it. Like it, it is not you know showing all this beautiful pattern when when I work on it. But then once I block it and it's uh, sealed, it's amazing. So so it's uh, I think it's exclusive sport again. I will put it on my Instagram on the information. Uh, of the yarn it's mulberry silk 100% sport I think from KFI I forget what KFI stands for but if you just google KFI silk sport yarn that's what it is uh, and this is perfect for summer and or spring and why did I put it on the mannequin because you know we're going back to spring soon and then I wonder if people are uh, making project two seasons ahead, meaning that while while we're in winter, excuse me, while in, we're in the winter, do you or are you starting to work on your summer wear? 
I like to do that, but I still have one more project that I after after this one that I want to work on right away, uh, which is a winter sweater. It's a cable sweater that I've been waiting to work on um, since. I mean, I talk about it in the previous episodes. But after that, I will start working on, you know, like spring and summer. And I definitely will go back to this. So, um, again, if you want to uh, work on it, you get your swatch, your circumference of your favorite tank top. And then this one is uh, worked bottom up. So basically, uh, uh, g- get your swatch and then measure the width of the diamond one diamond and then you multiply that or take the circumference and then divide uh divide it divide that circumference with the width of your diamond and that will be um how many repeats of your diamond you need and then if you know um if you know how many stitches per diamond you so let's say you need uh 10 stitch stitches to make one diamond and then let's say you need to have 25 um repeat of diamonds so you just multiply 25 by 10 so you cast on 250 stitches so after you cast on 250 stitches then you uh so right away you just start uh working on the diamond so as you can see here i don't even put any uh what do you call um any ribbings or even uh oh actually i just i just put one line of um uh, garter stitch uh, or one row of garter stitch after the cast on row and then start the diamond and it will sorry it will not it will not roll up on you uh, just because of how it is and I really like it I don't I don't like any any ribbing for my you know like for my uh, tank top it, this is a summer tank top um, and then uh, after you you work you know long enough for your body uh, you start um, separating for sleeve basically you put half of the stitches on you know like excess yarn or your your cord um, so if you have 20 250 stitches you put 125 stitches on excess yarn excess cord and continue working you know the the, the other 125 and as you can see here the the front and the back is, are different in height so what i do here you see this is basically just a decrease a decrease continue decreasing until i hit this part where uh, for the back side uh, once I decrease enough I just continue working back and forth and then I did not even do any shaping on this part so once I so once I uh, I finish the back side so you know so after separation I do this decrease 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 and then straight up then I go back to the front side. So that's the part where, you know, you put on um, excess yarn or barber cord uh, when you were working on the back side. So you put that back on your needle and then you do the same decrease, decrease, decrease. But then after you hit. So this is another thing. Wherever you want to have your front side of your uh, a, a tank top you you then start also de- uh, not decreasing uh, yeah decrease uh, decreasing also uh, from the middle part so from the middle part you decrease so to do that you um, but anyway if you have done this before so I guess I'm giving this uh, you know how to do this to people who are comfortable enough uh, to f- to to follow pattern that is not that is not you know like uh, telling you to do everything. So if you have done this kind before, basically I'm just telling you how to shape it. So basically you shape your underarm, 
all the way here and then once you hit here you start also shaping your front uh, the, the center part once you do that you at the end you you will just work on one side of the front and then you pick up again on one side of the front at the end you just have to uh combine or you know like um graph this two side together from the back and the front on each side and then that's it I have been wearing this last summer. I made this last summer. I I wear this during the Madrid Bear Pro no Madrid Pride week, and then I went to Cologne after Madrid. Um, I oh in Cologne, I was wearing another one. Um, no, actually, I was also wearing this in Cologne. But I also make another another color, um, and uh, I also wear the wore this when I was in C Cologne. Let me just put this so we can see it. Uh, so this one I. Uh, add a couple, a little bit um, extra design on the front side, just so that it is a little bit more, uh, it has a little bit more coverage. So you can see here, um, after I, I hit this um, middle, uh, like separation of, um, for the sleeve, I added this a mosaic design just so it can cover the you know the front side so so maybe you know it's a little bit modest so instead of just wearing it you know for uh on the beach i can put this on and you know walk on you know um outside of the beach area but anyway um this is nice. So I wear this also to Puerto Rico. So I went, so after like the European uh, trip, I also visited my friend in, in Puerto Rico before summer was over. And I again, you'll find everything in my Instagram at the extra knitting. Um, and this matched the color of... Um, the water in Puerto Rico. I guess that's uh, why I was making it in this uh, color. And this one is actually mixed wool and uh, silk. I got it from uh, Balzac Fiber in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Um, yeah. Now, after I make this... After I make that, those two, so that, and this, I make a a shirt, a simple shirt. So the, the same idea here, I start with uh, bottom up, and this one is so simple. There's no shaping on this one. Bottom up, and then sleeve separation once you hit sleeve separation on this one you just continue uh there's no decrease there's no increase just continue all the way up until you f you th uh, until i think that is you know uh f long enough to my shoulder and then put that on a uh, access core and then work on the other uh, on the back side or the front whatever side and then bring that up to the same length and then just grate them at the end so so it's it is beautiful i also will i also wore this when i was in cologne and i also wear this when i was in venice so i went to venice cologne padua italy cologne is in germany madrid santiago de compostela and spain and yeah i basically wear it wore it wash it in the hotel bathroom hang it uh you know so basically between these three 
uh, throughout my summer vacation, I had a beautiful, I, I, I enjoyed it so much. So I suggest if you want to start working on your summer uh, wear, make make multiple of them so you can wear them <laughs> throughout. Like, uh, like if you have like a summer vacation, like a whole week of a vacation, you know, you rotate them. If you go to a beach area or whatever area that, you know, you can wear tank top or, you know, um, it it is so enjoyable. Like even this. So this one is also wool and silk, but there it's because of its, you know, like design, it's really open. It's so enjoyable. It's um, I'm I'm. Or maybe you have done that. Maybe you already have your tank top and everything, and you, you know, you know that you know that is enjoyable. But what I'm saying is, you know, knitting is not just for winter. Uh, I, I knit year 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 round, and I wear them. So yeah, that's what I did not talk about last time. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. The next thing is. Um, I'm not going to repeat it over and over, but this is the next project that I will be working on. Uh, this is using, again, uh, the uh, Le Gasson, a uh, British DK in Max Khaki. Um, and... Uh, this will be a cable pullover, all over a cable, and I I will be using a Brooklyn Tweed uh, pattern. Again, go over my B extra knitting. I will put all the information there, and I hope to start it, start casting it on on Monday. Uh, hopefully, if uh, this will be done. If not, you know, Monday night. Why? Because I will be going to Greece uh, uh, from Wednesday, the 13th, the 13th, all the way to the 20th. Uh, this is one of my to-do list. Like growing up, I only heard the word Corinthos in Greece or Corinthus in Indonesian or Yunani in Indonesian or Elada in Greek or Elenos or Helen, uh, you know, um, Hellenic uh, culture or, or Greek culture. And I only heard all these words either when I was doing an, as, um, an altar boy work and during the mass, I grew up Catholic uh, or in school, uh, during the history class, geography, or art class, because uh, you know we we studied you know uh, ancient Europe culture on top of um, other cultures in the world, and then whenever I go, we got to this part of the world. To me, it is so it feels such a it felt such a far away. Um, place and you know a place with you know like some to me to, to me it, it, back then we did not have internet we did not have social media we did not have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook we had to go to either library or wait for your parents to be able to buy you encyclopedia with the volume that talks about all these places. So I remember reading the encyclopedia or hearing about it or just looking at the the, the map, the book, the map book at school when we learn about geography. But anyway, um, finally, I had the chance. I, have, I will have the chance to go to Greece and see all this, you know, um, ancient um sites with my own two eyes and uh i uh, i will only be staying in athens this time uh because you know it's not really um what do you call it it's not really summer yet so i'm not going to like uh 
Santorini or uh, Mykonos. Uh, I, but I would like to go uh, at another time to those islands. But there are a lot to see in Athens. And definitely I will be taking like a day tour to like all the ancient other ancient sites such as the Corinthos. Uh, or Mycenae, Mis- um, however you say it, I, I will learn it <laughs> when I was when I'm there, and I'm hoping to bring this uh, Sophie shawl and working on the the uh, the sweater with the um, the Legacon uh, DK. So that will be next week, and I will definitely um, be taking a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, and I'll definitely be knitting in Greece um, in any like a cafe in a like a coffee shop or and also I will be visiting some yarn stores there. So if you have any suggestion of some yarn stores in Athens or nearby that is you know for me worth it for me to to check out, let me know. Um, and I'll come back uh, in two weeks. And in the meantime, be extra, be brave, knit what you want, love what you knit. And I'll see you next time. Bye.